All right, the next part that we've got to do is the windows. We want to get your windows and doors on. Now, you're going to put something on all four sides, and they're all different. Your plans will have for you what you're going to do on each one. I'm going to show you how to do the, uh, the most basic parts of the front side. Okay, now, for this front, you're going to have to put a window on your bay window. And the trick with the windows is to remember that you don't want them to go right to the edge. You want to leave at least an eighth of an inch of a space around all the different surfaces that you're going to build the window inside of. Okay, and you want all of your windows to look the same, okay, to have the same styling with the exception of the really big ones. So when we do our bay window, we're actually going to put three small windows on each of these surfaces that we created right here, and we want all three of them to look exactly the same. When we do the back, our intent is to put one big window and a door on the back side. And then on this side, where we're going to have our chimney, we're going to put one small little two-inch window right here that we'll put a thick planter box underneath. And then the last step will be to build the chimney. Okay, so moving to the front, okay, this is probably the hardest one to lay out because you're going to have three, you're going to have three windows, actually two windows and a door, and they need to be spaced evenly. Now on this particular design, the windows and the door are all two inches wide. They are all four inches high. So what we want to do first <coughs> is to measure out and figure exactly where each of those pieces is going to go. So we take a measurement, we get our ruler out, and we measure the gap in between the moldings. Now this one happens to be about seven and a half inches. Okay, at seven and a half inches, if we put three windows or two windows and a door, we're going to end up with four spaces. Space on the outside, space in between the window and the door, space in between the door and the other window, and then the space between the side or the molding and the window. So that gives us four spaces. So we have seven and a half inches. Each one of these doors and windows is two inches. So if we add them together, that gives us six inches of door and window space. That leaves one and a half inches to spread to make those four spaces. Okay? If we use about three-eighths of an inch, because three-eighths plus three-eighths equals three-quarters, and two three-quarters equals one and a half, that should give us the correct spacing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark at three-eighths, and then I'm going to move over two inches, and I'm going to mark, and then I'm going to move another three-eighths of an inch, and I'm going to mark. I'm going to move over two inches and mark, go over three-eighths of an inch and mark, go over two inches and mark, and I should have three-eighths of an inch left, which I do. Okay? So here I have my little marks. One, two, three, four, five, six different marks. Now, I want to take my little square, um, square that we use that's small enough to fit into these spaces, and we're going to draw our lines perpendicular. We're going to draw them very lightly. We do not want to use dark lines because the dark lines will be very difficult to get rid of. Okay, so always use a pencil while you're doing this so that you can erase very easily when you're done. So what we do is we set our square right on the bottom of the birdhouse, holding it very carefully, very steady with your thumb, and then draw a very light line that goes no higher than four inches. Okay, then you move over and draw your next one exactly the same. No more than four inches high. Okay, draw your next one. Again, no more than four inches high, because you don't want to have to erase if you don't have to. Your last one over here. And then I'm going to turn this around and do the very front one over here, since I never did that one. Okay. Now I have my two, my three two-inch spaces. The middle one's going to be a door. The two outside ones are going to be windows. And then we want to measure up our exact four-inch mark. And give ourselves a little mark. Do that over on this other side as well. And then we can lay a straight edge. It's long enough to span across the top. And draw our four-inch lines. This way we know that we're putting the doors in exactly the right spot. Okay, make sure we leave the spaces. 
Okay, so our windows are now laid out as far as their outsides go. Now, the difference between doors and windows is that the door does not have a little board that goes across the bottom of it. The door itself goes all the way to the bottom. The windows have a framing member on the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our little pieces of material that we're going to use to make our doors and windows, and we're going to mark them and cut a bunch of two-inch pieces. Now, we know that we're going to have to have at least one, two, three, four, five two-inch pieces, and then we're going to put the other pieces in between. So we're going to mark two inches, and we're going to do that over and over again. So if you use a longer ruler, it'll make things a little bit easier. Okay, so I mark it two inches. And now the reason we can mark these continuously like this is because the razor saw does not take much of any material out, so it's not going to change the length. It's got one, two, three. I've cut out this little knot piece right here that I don't want. Okay, so I've got all my marks. One, two, three, four, five, six. <coughs> Now I'm just going to take my razor saw and I'm going to put my piece in my miter box and I'm going to put the razor saw right on the mark and I'm going to drag toward me and in one pull you can probably cut it off nicely. Okay, line it right up on there. Now if you've done your marking very carefully you'll have exactly two inch pieces. Drag and if it takes you more than one drag that's okay. Cut off this messed up piece here. Remember, don't use any, any pieces that you don't want people to see. Okay, that's three of them. And now before you do any gluing of these on, you want to make sure you've cleaned off any rough edges that the saw has left. Okay, so there are my five pieces. If you keep a little piece of sandpaper nearby, you can just drag those rough edges over a piece of sandpaper on the table. Okay, so I've got my pieces. Now, I'm going to lay the house over on its back, like this. And we're going to move the camera so we can see it a little bit better. Okay, and what we're going to do now is we're just going to put some little dabs of glue. We don't want to use very much because we don't want the glue to ooze out all over the place. Okay, now would be a good time, like I'm having to clean off the tip of my glue bottle so that it doesn't smear glue all over. And you want to be able to put out a nice, sharp bit of glue. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little dab of glue on the back side of this piece all the way down. Again, I don't want very much. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start as furthest away from me so that I don't make a mess of it by running my hand over the top of it. And I'm just going to push it into place making sure it stays right on those lines that I drew. If you do not draw those lines, I can guarantee you, you will make your piece crooked. Okay, put another little blob of glue on the back of the second piece and lay this one in place. Okay, make sure it's flush with the bottom. You don't want it to hang over set up higher. And you're going to do the same thing with the third piece. This is the top of the door. Make sure you're lining it up sideways and keeping it on the line so it's nice and horizontal. And move over to the other window because I don't want one down here on the bottom. it in place. Now the glue should hold this as long as you don't bump it because these are very tiny pieces that shouldn't go anywhere. So there should be no need for nailing or anything like that. Set these all in place. Get them lined up with their lines. Squeeze them down. Make sure they're flush where they're supposed to be flush and right on lines. Okay? And there are the beginnings. Now, you're going to need to take a, an accurate measurement of the space in between. Three and a half inches is what mine says. 
So now I need to cut some pieces that are three and a half inches. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one of them first. I'm going to square off my end so that I'm sure that I have a good square edge. I'm just using my miter box again. Okay. And I'm going to measure three and a half inches. Okay, on here. And once I have my three and a half inch mark, I'll make that cut. And then I'll test it and make sure that it fits in the two windows. If it does, then I can trace it to cut my other three pieces. Okay, so we have that one cut off now. And we're going to put that in place here. Now that's just right. Okay, it's not tight enough that it'll make it move, but not loose enough that it shows any big gaps. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to transfer this, line these ends up just right. And then I'm just going to make a mark where that needs to be. And then slide it down and line that right up on the line and make a mark. And one more because I need three more pieces. Now, it would be better to make them too long than to make them too short. To make them too short, they will have to use them as scraps for other pieces. Put the razor saw right on the line. And then cut. And hopefully this one also fits. It does. So there are my first two. Put this one in. This one for the other window. Remember, the door is different. Okay, so I have all those. Now, I'm going to cut two more of these the exact same length because I need them for the center pieces of my windows. So I'll mark those. Again, just setting them right on top, making the marks, and then cutting them off. Okay. There's a center piece for that window, and a center piece for the other window. Okay, so this one will go in here, and my other short piece. Okay. So there are the main long pieces. Now we can go ahead and glue these into place. The only ones you'll have to measure will be your center pieces because you definitely want to make sure you get those in the center. So again, I'm just going to put a very tiny bead of glue on here, stick that into place. And the most important thing you can do is line it up with the edges of the other pieces that you've already got on there. Now, if you find that when you put the glue on there, it makes these bend when one side of the wood gets wet with the glue and the other side doesn't, sometimes they will curl. If that happens, you may need to put a piece of tape across the two ends to hold them in place. Okay, make sure you get them pushed down well into place. Okay, we'll do that with these now. See, this is not a terribly difficult process. The hard part comes when you have to cut all the tiny little pieces to make what we call lights. Not lights like L-I-G-H-T, but light like L-I-T-E. That's what the little squares appear in fancy windows. They have those little dividers in them. Okay, so line that up. Get that right in place. Push it down. Okay, so we have the two main parts of our windows done. Now, you're going to want to measure these pieces to get them in the right place. Okay, you can do it either by setting the piece in and then measuring on both sides of it to make sure that it's correct. This one's got 5 eighths and 5 eighths. Okay, so that's even. Okay, and then you'll want to measure down at the bottom as well to make sure it's nice and even. And then you're going to want to draw a line. Very light, but seeable, so that you know where to glue that one in place. Okay, set that right on the line. And there we go. Okay, we'll do 
the same thing with that piece. Set the piece in place, measure it to make sure we've got the same distance on both sides. Check that it's straight up and down. If it's not straight up and down, you end up with a slightly bigger gap or smaller gap on one side. It makes it tough to cut off little pieces that need to go in there. Again, we draw that line. And we put a little bit of glue. Make sure we put our lines just right. And push that into place. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut some tiny little pieces that are going to go in each one of these and create the cross pieces. Okay. The optimum is going to be to use one, two, three, four different pieces so that we create four windows on each side. Actually, five windows on each side. We can probably get away with going with three on this particular one. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure, we're going to measure you know, that they're five-eighths or thereabouts. So we're going to cut some five eighths, we'll cut one, and make sure that it actually fits. And if it fits, then we'll cut a whole bunch more in the same size. Square it in. We're going to measure it. Make sure we've got our five eighths. And then we'll cut this off. Hopefully this will fit. Could be a little bit small. Looks like it's going to fit pretty nicely in there. Take that out. Check it on this side. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty good. Did a good job of getting them even. So now we need to mark on here and just set a whole bunch of them and cut them all exactly the same length. Some of you might find it easier to actually measure them than to try to do this. And you have to make sure you do very accurate work. A lot of little pieces that you have to cut. You'll have to do this on the windows for the dormer, as well as the windows in the bay window. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, nine. Take and cut these all. Yeah, you can cut a few at a time, or you can cut a whole bunch of them at one time. A few at a time would probably be safer, just in case you happen to have a variance in size. Again, keep a little piece of sandpaper nearby so that you can get any rough edges off of them. Sometimes it's amazing what a tiny little piece will do as far as not allowing it to fit. <coughs> okay. Now, again, you have to measure and get your spacing correct. This one, you obviously want to have right in the middle. Okay, see where that one might be just a smidge too big? Looks like it'll fit on that one. Okay, now we're just checking for spacing. Adjust them, make sure that we get the same spacing for every one of them. Once you figure that out, we've got three quarters. It's less than three quarters, so that one's going to have to go up. Five eighths. Okay, looks like it's going to be in between five eighths and three quarters. Our measurements right about there. <coughs> Take that one out. Now we glue each of these in place. 
get those all the way down there so that the window looks like it's made with a whole bunch of lights. Cut just a couple more off here. Let's see what the window's supposed to look like. Okay, now this part's a little bit tedious as far as putting all the pieces in, but basically this is what your window should look like when it's done. Make sure you glue them and glue them straight. You don't want them to be crooked, you want them to line up with each other, all that kind of stuff. Okay, do the same thing to this window. Now the door is going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, and I'll show you that in just a second. To do the doors, we're going to do exactly the same thing, except this time we're going all the way to the bottom with them. So we can just use this method to so mark and measure, and then cut. And we'll just duplicate that particular little piece right there. This way, and we'll just put a line right there and just cut that off. These pieces will be glued going straight down. Okay, and we'll make these look different because we'll actually make this look like a door by putting in a solid couple of pieces. Try to avoid spreading your glue around on there and make sure everything lines up. Do a good job on this because once you've put them on there, there's no change in it. Remember to, to do your problem solving as you go. If you get too much glue oozing out, next time don't use so much glue. Okay, once you've got your door posts on, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to take a small piece of your material and you're going to stand it up on its edge this time. And you're going to cut it so that it fits in that opening. So we're just going to make a mark. It doesn't have to be perfect and be really tight. It can be a little bit short. And we're going to lay it up on its edge and put it in there about an inch and a half from the bottom. And what we're trying to do is we're going to try to emulate a, uh, a, one of those old-fashioned half doors. That would, there where the bottom half and the top half would open independently. Okay, so you're going to put a little bit of glue on there. Okay, you don't want a lot. But this one, instead of gluing flat, you're going to glue up on edge. And you want to get it straight. Measure both sides if you have to. Okay, once that's up like that, then you're going to use some thin material that looks like this. And you're going to cut some panels that have a space all the way around. Okay, so I've got this space here is about an inch and a half, if I put it in the right spot, and I did. So I'm going to cut this one about an inch and a quarter by about a quarter of an inch smaller, so that one is an inch and a half in there, so I'm going to go an inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter. So you want to find a good edge on your piece, measure your inch and a quarter. an inch and a quarter this way. It's much easier working on a flat surface than right here on top of the house. Okay, and then use your square. Check to make sure your first one is square. That one is. And then right here we're going to draw this line. And then <coughs> the other one. Now you can do, you can, uh, if your piece is small enough, you can do it in the miter box. If not, you may have to take it over to the power miter and very carefully cut your first inch and a quarter off. Okay, so there's my first inch and a quarter. Set that in the miter box and cut the second one.
Okay, now if you've done this correctly, this piece will fit in here just like this and will look like the panel of the door. Okay, and once you've got that in there, figure out which side is your good side and which side is your bad side, and just put a little bit of glue on that. Again, not too much. And spread the glue around evenly over the entire surface, like this. And then very carefully set that in place. Make sure your grain is running up and down. Space it evenly so you get the exact same amount of space on both sides, the top and bottom. Okay, then you're going to do the exact same thing for the top piece. Again, it's an inch and a quarter wide, but this time it's going to be one and seven eighths inches long. So I'm going to take my piece and measure one and seven eighths. in it, and when you do your windows on your bay window, do exactly the same thing, remembering to stay away from the edges just a little bit. You can design your own windows as long as they're all the same. Now, the windows that are, the window that's going to go on this side right here, okay, is just a small two-inch window, and you want the top of that window to be four inches high, same as this. You want the windows on your bay window to be four inches high, okay? Same, so that the tops of all the windows match the same height as the tops of all of these. So on your back, again, four inches high. Okay, look at your drawings to master those shapes. And the last step we'll show you is the chimney. 